And especially on this wonderful, amazing evening. What makes it amazing? What makes it uh, different to any other evening? Well, I, I think for me, what makes it different is the fact that I know that for many, many weeks now, people have been preparing, preparing for something, not only to feast and get together with the families and so on, but in the entire world at this time as several great religions um, enter into spiritual celebrations, celebrating light, light, whether that happens to be Diwali in the Hindu tradition or whether it happens to be Hanukkah in the Jewish tradition or whether it is the Christ light in the Christian tradition or whether it is the light of virtue when we that wonderful feast that begins the day after Christmas. Can anybody tell me what that is? Kawans, yes, indeed. And it's all about the light of, the light of what? The light of power and energy and virtue and goodness and kindness and, and love, unconditioned and unconditional. That's what we celebrate here tonight. And so it is written, a child is born to us, unto us a child is given. And the child's name is wonderful. Mighty, Counselor, Everlasting, Prince of Peace, and his reign is without end. And you think to yourself, well, what has that got to do with me here tonight? And it has everything to do with you and me here tonight. And so when we break this down and we look at what it means to us in our teaching we see the amazing, amazing wisdom and grace within it. So the child is born. The light of consciousness is born. The Christed one emerges out of the darkness of separation, out of the darkness of forgetfulness, out of the darkness of ignorance. That's what that means. The child is the Christ light, the Christ energy, the Christ power that is within you and that is within me, always has been, always will be. The difference between you and me and Jesus the Christ at one is that he woke up in it. He returned back to his true essence and he entered into that Christed state of at one with the Father. And the Father was his favorite name for the creator of us all. What, and it's called by many names, and Jesus liked to call the creator of our being, the sustainer of our lives, the provider of our good, and the lover of our soul, Father. For him, it meant a great deal. And so each one of us will view that however we choose to view that and relate to that light the, the personal way that we do. And so that's what we're celebrating here tonight. So you look at it and you break it down. What does it mean? A child is born. Something new, something fantastic, something um, riveting, something delightful, something that causes us wonder and joy comes into being, comes into being. And the child is the Christ light that we're talking about here. And so... The name of that child is wonderful. And wonderful is wonder and awe. It is awesome. It is, causes us to be speechless and to be just filled with a sense of awe and wonder that is so filling. There are no words to describe that because it's indescribable. We're talking about the ineffable here and you can't describe that. And so the name is wonderful, and the name is mighty, mighty. Mighty is its power, mighty is its presence, mighty is its reach. Mighty is the way we describe that to which everything and within everything is possible. No, nothing barred. Everything is possible, mighty, eternal. It's permanent, it's ongoing, it's consistent, it's with us always. It never changes and it never leaves us. It's always the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And that is available to you and to me too. That's its name too. And then we are told Prince of Peace. Well, of course, of course. 
where there is the Christ light, where there is that cosmic power and force in manifestation, in demonstration, there is not only peace, but there's unity, there's harmony, there's atonement. There's that sense of fullness, completeness, and wholeness of being. So yes, that's the name too of this child, the Christed one. And then we are t told, which jazzes me more than anything else, the government is placed upon his shoulders. And I just was absolutely revved up when I was uh, thinking about that yesterday and today. The government is placed upon his ch shoulders. What does that mean? And this is what it means for you and for me. That the more we wake up and the more we return back to the truth of our being and the more we stop identifying our false identity, which is just the egoic self, the human self, and that is a very false identity that you and I over-identify with to um, the ignoring of the truth of our being, which is the divine aspect of our being, the invisible aspect of our being, the eternal aspect of our being, the mighty aspect of our being, the wonderful aspect of our being, the peaceful aspect of our being, the everlasting aspect of our being. Well, that means that the government of your life and my life is placed squarely on my own shoulders. That's what it means, and that is absolutely phenomenal to know. That I have dominion over my life. My life is my life, and I get to govern it. I get to govern it, but the I that we're talking about is the great I am in the sense of the Christ light, or the Christ awareness, or the... Christ wakefulness. And the Christ is achieved when we succeed in bringing a perfect balance between the human and the divine element as the Jesus and all the enlightened ones. That's how they became Christed or enlightened. That's the Buddha mind. That's the Christ mind. And we are told, put on the Buddha mind, put on the Christ mind, enter into it. And that's what tonight is all about. So the government of your life and mine is with us, and we can rule it wisely and we can rule it well. And we are also told that it's called the counselor, the counselor, the counselor. And when I was a youngster growing up in catechism class in Holy Ireland, I can tell you, um, uh, the, the, the counselor was called the comforter. And the comforter and the counselor were called the Holy Spirit. And Jesus promised, you know, I will send you the comforter when I am not with you. When the Christ, you see, seems to disappear, it doesn't really, but the comforter is always there. The comforter, the counselor, the Holy Spirit. And what is that in our way of understanding it? It's the divine law itself. It is the creative force in the universe, the divine law, the mother law, the comforter, the Holy Spirit, the counselor. And it's always the divine law that comes to our aid and that gives us and brings to us every good thing that we've ever experienced once we're open to it and know it. And so we are told that the reign of the, the Christed one, the child, who's called all these wonderful names, is without end, is forever. And so here we are. We have this Christmas story, which until, you know, I was an adult, didn't fully grasp and realize that in the way we understand it by means of um, metaphysics and so on, and, and, and not just within our realm, but in other spiritual realms too, it's understood that the relevance of Christmas or the Holy Night is to be experienced every day of our lives and that now we can redeem this wonderful event, this Christed event from a single historical occasion, from uh, days many, many years ago from a culture that existed many years ago and so on in that particular form and understand that Christmas is every single day of our lives because that's Christedness, that's all it is. It's enlightenment, it's awareness, it's conscious consciousness that you and I can catch 
And yet, there is that great power and force in the universe greater, greater than we are, and we get to use it. But it has to be invited. It will not come to us or through us uninvited. It must be invited. It must be invoked. It must be invoked. And that's the story of tonight. And so when we get it, we understand that once we come into the awareness that I have dominion of my own life and the government of my life rests upon my own shoulders, and if I can just bring myself up out of that false identity I have or tend to have with the egoic self of me that runs me a merry chase and keeps me scared and worried and concerned and striving and struggling and, and competing and all of that. If I could just understand I don't have to be in that frame, I can move into the true essence and the true nature of myself, which is that which um, is absolutely empowered from the incipiency of my being, absolutely um, having available to me a law, a force, a power that can bring to me any good thing, take from me any negative thing, create anything in my life of good that is possible, knowing that all is possible, if I can just get it if I can just reach deep enough and stay long enough and be consistent enough to, to endeavor to prove it, to prove it, to prove it through this kind of consistency, then I too, I too can feel what was felt in that person who became Christed when that person became Christed. And I, too, will hear the words, hail, full of grace, the Lord law is with you. Blessed are you, because that which is mighty has done great things to, through, and for you. And holy is its name. And holy is your name. Because the Christed one, Jesus, said, Go and do likewise. This too can you do. Go and do likewise. Reminding us that it's for everybody. And the story says, go tell everyone. Good news for everyone. No one was left out, the good, the bad, the indifferent. Go tell everyone. And the beauty of it is knowing that in spite in spite, in spite of the lowly manger mentality of lacking uh, uh, and limiting ourselves through the way we think and our negative thoughts and our negative feelings, in spite of that, that the glory of spirit, the glory of truth, the glory of Christ's light enters into the lowly in the midst of it, in spite of it, it's not concerned about it, comes to the lowly manger of our poor thinking and our poor feeling and all the rest of it. And when it enters into that manger and moves into the cradle of our hearts, it lifts it, it raises it up to its own splendor, to its own splendor. And when we grasp that and understand that, I don't have to do anything, become anything, any of that. There's nothing more I can add to myself in order for this to happen. All I have to do is to wake up and know it's available to me now. Because my past, right up to this moment, does not equal my future and is not who and what I am, no matter what my past is. I can be redeemed from my history, but I have to do the redeeming because the government is upon my own shoulders and mighty is the name within me, wonderful is the name within me. Counselor is the name within me. Prince of Peace is the name within me. No matter how I am, or how I'm feeling, or what's going on, that's the truth of my being. That's the message of Christmas. You already have it. You just have to wake up to it, if you so desire.
but you've got to want it. You've got to want it. You've got to have that open thirstiness, that hunger, that unstoppable um, sens sensibility that says, I will know my God, I will touch my God, I will see my God, and in this flesh I will see God, I will know God, because we are told that's how it is done. Not only is it possible, it's the only way it can happen. In the flesh, I can know God. I can see God. I can feel God. I can touch God in the flesh. And that's what enlightenment and wakening up is all about. Understanding there is only God and God is all there is. And if I don't get that within myself first of and then get it in you and you and you and every single person on this planet and every living thing and in all creation, I am staying asleep. To some degree, I will stay asleep and I will never know what this holy night is like. And I will never fully embrace the babe that visits me in my lonely manger and enters into the cradle of my heart no matter what, awaiting my recognition and only my recognition. Oh, holy night. And that holy night is right where I am and always for me saying, look, listen, 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 listen. The holy night is happening and it's happening within you and it's present to you every single moment because... When love enters in, love remains and stays and never, ever leaves. And that's what Christmas is about. It's about love coming and opening up our minds and opening up our hearts so that we too can sing the song of the manger, the song of the cradle, the song of the holy night and allow ourselves to feel that singing from within ourselves, the singing of shepherding thoughts and shepherding feelings and shepherding sense and sensibilities of all being well. Because the government of my life is upon my shoulders. And when I surrender, when I surrender my worldly beingness with all the judgments and lacks and limitations and everything else to the Christ light within me, there is nothing that is kept from me that is good. I am unstoppable in manifesting good, not only for myself, but for all life, and to know the truth that sets me free from the imprisonment of the egoic, scary, frightened self that keeps me in the darkness of mind thought and keeps me in the negativity of heart feeling because I'm not awake yet, because I am in my false sense of identity and because I keep calling myself by the name that is not mine, and I'm not willing to say, the God I am, the God I am, the God I am, right where I am, right here and right now. I'm afraid to do that because I don't believe it, not really, because if all of us believed that there was a powerful good in the universe greater than we are, and we could use it and we're using it, we would be, I would say, we would already have transformed onto another plane. <laughs> really. If we truly believed it, we couldn't be here. We'd combust. We really would. We'd be beyond walking on water. We really would. And so, my dear ones, let's not miss this opportunity. Let's understand that each and every one of us needs to give ourselves a silent night every single day, even if it's only for five minutes. And a silent night means pausing, stopping, and listening. Listening to that which is greater than we are on the invisible side of life. Listening with an ear that's not a human ear, 
and perceiving with an eye that's not a human eye, but to enter into the greatness of our being, into the invisible side of life, which is our vast life, which is our true life, which is the eternality of us, what continues and continues and continues. I am saying to each and every one of us, it awaits us all. This is the moment, this is the time, this is the place, this is the space. And if it's not received, don't worry, because sooner or later, we will all wake up whether we want to or not. We will all wake up and we will come to our senses like the prodigal son and we will return back to the truth of our being. And not just for ourselves. We're not here to do this for ourselves. We're here to be the embassies that we're supposed to be. We're here to be the divine conduits, the channels that we're supposed to be. We're here in service. We're only here. You never come to planet Earth for any other reason except to serve. We're all in servancy. I love that old-fashioned word. We're all in sacred servancy to the divine. Not the divine up there. Not the divine over there. Not the divine over there. To the divine within this flesh here and all those fleshes out there and all those fleshes everywhere. We are in service to each other. And I'm telling you, it is only when we catch that, cop that on, that we really begin to be happy. And the kings, the worldly kings, come to us and they bend their knee at that cradle. And the gifts they leave us are the gifts of abundant life, peace that passes understanding, and joy complete. That's what happens when you and I catch the consciousness of the truth of our being. So I am saying, radiate, radiate, radiate. And when you catch yourself on being the small egoic self, laugh and say, I don't think so. That was then, this is now and put that in its place. Love it, be kind to it, take care of it, assuage it, but put the government upon your shoulders and take dominion and be who you are and know who you are, what you are and whose you are. And that's the message of this holy night and so it is. Woo!